Okay, so let's do a little review on our four main segments that we've learned about for triangles in here. The first one is going to be a median. It's going to produce centroids. The intersection of all four altitudes is going to be our orthocenter. We have an angle bisector. They're going to intersect to form the incenter. And the last one is all four perpendicular bisectors create a circumcenter. So let's go back to our table of contents here. Let's talk about our centroid. Well, if I build and show you all of the excuse me, to show you all of the uh, medians, all three medians in here are going to intersect. No matter what triangle I drag and move around here, all three medians will intersect at the centroid. And so we have um, these very difficult uh, three lines coming together at one point. We call those concurrent lines at a point of concurrency. And these special uh, lines, like I said, are medians intersecting at the centroid. We also have this uh, very cool relationship between the two segments created by the median and the centroid. It turns out the longer segment is going to be twice as long as the smaller segment. And that applies for any of the medians that we discover in here. The section is going to be twice as long as that section in here. No matter what type of triangle I have, it's always going to have that relationship. All right, that's kind of neat. Let's do the next one, which is going to be the altitudes. So when I move this triangle around, which I'm going to do right now, I have an orthocenter. And how do we find that orthocenter? Well, it turns out if you draw three altitudes in, you are going to have an orthocenter. And notice I am keeping my triangle, an acute triangle right now. Notice where the orthocenter is located. It's located inside the triangle. As soon as I move my triangle to be a right triangle, ding, all of a sudden the orthocenter is at the right uh, angle within the right triangle. I can do the same thing over here if I swing it on the other side. So C is the right angle. Turns out the orthocenter is on the vertex of the right triangle. I can also make B the right angle and therefore the orthocenter is on the triangle. The moment I make it an obtuse triangle, look where the orthocenter goes. So even if I go over here, it becomes a right triangle, and now it is an obtuse triangle. The orthocenter is on the outside. So right now it's acute. I can tell by the orthocenter being on the inside. It's going to be a right triangle as soon as it is on the triangle, and then the moment it's obtuse, it goes on the outside. And that's always going to occur with three alto altitudes intersected. All right, let's take another one. Uh, let's take our in-center. Why is it called the in-center? Well, the in-center in 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 is formed by the construction of three angle bisectors, all intersecting together, which is very difficult to do. Any three lines that intersect in one point are called concurrent lines at the point of intersection, called the point of concurrency. And this one's a special name called the in-center. Uh, and it's called the in-center because that is a special point. It's actually the center of this circle which is inscribed the triangle. No matter what triangle I draw, acute, right, obtuse, doesn't really matter. Uh, that center is always formed by the intersection of all three angle bisectors, and it's always going to be the center of the circle, which is inscribed the triangle, which is circumscribed about the circle. And let's do the last one. The last one is called the circumcenter and why is it called the circumcenter well first of all we have to construct it by forming the three perpendicular bisectors and so all three of those segments are perpendicular bisectors and 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 notice it's an acute triangle right now very similar to the altitudes i can tell it's acute because that point is on the inside the moment i make it a right triangle Look what happens. The circumcenter becomes the midpoint of the hypotenuse. And notice when I make it an obtuse triangle, look where the circumcenter goes to. So once again, it's an acute triangle right now. I can make it a right triangle. How would I do that? Right there, B is a right angle. Therefore, the circumcenter is at the midpoint of the hypotenuse. 
and I can also make C I can also make C the right angle over here and still the circumcenter goes to the midpoint of the hypotenuse right there and again the moment I make it obtuse the circumcenter goes on the outside of the triangle now why is it called the circumcenter well it's because when I show this circle in here that circle is actually this the circumcenter is the center of the circle which circumscribes the triangle so the triangle here is inscribed and the circle is circumscribed about the triangle notice this is kind of fun to play with in here if I keep on moving stuff around we have a right triangle in here as a nice review the circumcenter is on the triangle we have an acute triangle in here because it's inside the triangle and then the moment I make it obtuse it is outside the triangle but still the integrity of the picture is true about the circumcenter is always going to be the intersection of all three perpendicular bisectors and when it's obtuse that circle is going to be circumscribed about the triangle all right hopefully that was helpful as a small review of what we've been doing over the last uh, couple classes